Hello guys and welcome back to the shack. Today, a little cool project I thought some of you guys might like. Now what you see here is what's called, this is this is my speaker. I've just got it temporarily hooked up. This is a little board. This is an ultrasonic transmitter receiver, 40 kilohertz. Uh, runs on 9 volt battery. This is going to be my panel for my box. This is going to be a little box I'm going to put everything in. So, is what this is, is you've seen, uh, I guess if you have power line noise or something, you've probably watched some videos and you've seen the ARRL with this real cool device that picks up, you know, power line arcing noises. And it's basically is what it is. It's a receiver that operates in the ultrasonic spectrum, 40 kilohertz. So that's what it does. It's a power line arc detector, ultrasonic power line arc detector. So I've had some noise in my area. I had AEP come out and they uh, fixed a couple of noise sources, but there's still a couple more that um, I'm still locating and I'm going to try to get them to fix them and get it all wrapped up. I've been looking for the um, one that you see the ARRL lab use on um, YouTube but that is a um, RF engineering I think a 250 model and they're quite expensive from what I've seen on eBay so I got to looking around online and I found some I found some um, information on how to just build one yourself so that's what I thought I would do I thought well I'll just build me one so this is the board this one here is completely done it's all completed this is the board now if you don't want to do you know this this I purchased this board and then I just got all the components and populated the board if you don't want to you know I know etching you know circuit boards sometimes can be a mess and yeah blah 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 so there's a company called fair circuits and you can actually purchase this board from them it's just the circuit board you have to get all your parts and so forth and populate the board but if you do a Google search of an ultrasonic power line arc detector, there's a ham with the call sign Whiskey One Tango Radio Charlie. And he's the guy that actually designed this particular unit. And you can go online and you can download his PDF and it'll have everything. I'll show you what that looks like. This is actually... It's Whiskey One Tango Radio Charlie's ultrasonic power line arc detector. There's a picture of the board and the components. So once you order the board or if you want to etch your own, that's up to you. I ordered my board from Fair Circuits. It uh, wasn't much. I think $5 or something. It's, it's not that expensive. And I bought all my parts and just populated the board. You can download everything off the net. Here's the schematic of the circuit. Here's the board, and then it's got, um, you know, all the parts list, and the only issue that you're going to run into is the 40 kilohertz transducer. From what I've discovered, Mauser don't carry these, or they do carry them, but you have to order a super large quantity to get one. I found these on eBay. They're 400 SRs, 40 kilohertz. And it works great. I ordered a pack of, I think, six of them. And I can't remember how much it was. Maybe ten bucks or something. I don't remember. But you'll need an ultrasonic transducer. You know, you'll need some capacitors, resistors. A CMOS 555 timer. You'll need a 386 audio amplifier. And that's about it. Some transistors, common stuff you might have. I, I had most everything here except for the transducer and a couple of the, the box caps. But other than that, that was it. I had, you know, I've got a little plastic box that everything is going to fit into. And it'll have a nice cover on it when I get done. And it'll, um, it'll look great. I'll um, see if I can pull up a picture of one that's completed. And that'll uh, give you an idea of what it looks like when it's done. Now, another problem I run into, not just the transducer, is the dish. Now, here's the dish. 
that I got. Let's see if I can back up enough to show it to you. Now, this is one that I purchased at Lowe's. And this is called, this is actually called a squirrel and baffle. Because I looked online and some of these parabolic dishes, good God, they run in the, they're like, you know, for one that I found online is like almost a hundred bucks just for the dish. I thought, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm either going to make my own dish or also I got to doing some research on Google and looking around and watching YouTube videos and so forth. And I seen a guy was using that squirrel baffle he found it and uh, it looks just like a you know, it looks just like a parabolic dish i mean there's it's and it's just like i said it's just a it's just a squirrel baffle so that's the dish now let's see if i can get some other pictures pulled up here here's going to be a picture of the transducer in the mount that's going to mount to the dish when it gets finished that's sort of what is what it looks like here's the transducer this will be the dish, and this will be the hole in the center, and it'll all mount. But you can go online, do a Google search, and you can pull up all kinds of pictures. Here's a picture of the unit completed. I mean, there's just a gazillion pictures that will give you. Now, here's, here is the complete unit, all finished. Here's the dish. Here's some PVC piping, all you need to make a mount. And here's the box with the circuit board and the line that runs out to the transducer. And you have a headphones jack so you can plug it up to a set of headphones and put it on your ears. And for those of you who don't know what this does, it just receives noise in the 40 kilohertz range that you're, normally your ears won't hear. Right now, I do have this one powered on. I've got it hooked to a big speaker here, so I was hoping... The uh, phone, the camera and the phone when I'm doing the video with would, would pick it up. So I'll turn, if I can turn the transducer around here a little bit. And can you hear that? You can hear my fingers rubbing. I can get it to uh, stand up here correctly. Normally you wouldn't be able to hear that. See if I go over here, you can't hear it. But. Ah. And with this on the dish, you should be able to pick your fingers up, just rub them together, I'm about ten feet away. In your box, you have a you have a volume control and a power switch. Turn the unit on and off. And this is the tune. This is what tunes the transducer. And when you get it perfectly tuned, you should be able to hear that sound right there. Now there is on the board, if I can get a picture of it here, there is right here, you'll see frequency where you can hook up and you can calibrate it by frequency. But I didn't do that. They said, you know, if you don't have the equipment to do that or so forth, you can just tune your pot till you hear your fingers rubbing together. So that's what I did. So that's it, guys. That's what we're, that's what I've been working on. Here's another, another picture of the board completed. Everything populated, just what I, exactly what I've got here. But you can go online and pull up some websites, and you'll you'll see, you'll see exactly how to build one, and you'll go through. I'll put links to everything in the in the um, in the below, so you guys you know make it easy for you. You can click on the link; it'll take you right to everything that I did. Just runs off a simple nine volt battery, and that's it, guys. And uh, you know, of course, you can take it out, and um, yeah, you can do some some power if you have severe power line noise. You can go out and you can pinpoint it down to the exact insulator or you know the exact piece of equipment on the pole that's causing the problem. Now, first off, you got to find the pole that's causing the problem, and usually the best way to do that is to take a little AM receiver 
or I take a, I have a two meter handy talkie that has a um, AM mode in it. So I use that little handy talkie with, a, I've got a little three element beam, a little small beam that I built. And you can hone in on the pole that's causing the problem. And then when you, you can take this, take your ultrasonic dish and your arc detector and you can go right to the pole point it around on that pole and you'll 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 be able to pick out exactly which piece of um, equipment on the pole that's causing the problem so that's my um, video for today I'll probably be doing some some more projects coming soon here so I know you guys like like to see videos but um, we've got some more stuff coming uh, one more thing I don't know if you guys know but there was a big there was a big update to the um, the 9600 focus there was a big update to the 9600 lately a firmware update added a whole lot of features a whole lot of different stuff extra features you can add now you can put like four DMR IDs into this radio and you can pitch pick which ID you want to use. I don't know why you would want to do that. You know, I, I only have one, so. But I guess some people have an amateur DMR ID and they probably have a commercial and, you know, if you're um, field day or something, you can switch between users and so forth. But yeah, that'd be cool. Another thing, I don't know if you own an FTDX 1200. I do have a, uh, let me get this cord out of the way. I do have an FTDX 1200. HF radio. If I can get this thing to focus. And. Let me turn it down. There's a new update that gives the. Get back to the scope. Here we go. You can see the uh, waterfall. Before, we did not have this waterfall. We had. Um, we had the um, just the uh, show the signals on the band, but it didn't show waterfall. So recently, yeah, you do um, there's some firmware updates. You've actually you can customize this screen here, the little AF FFT screen. Focus really can't tell this. You can't. It looks a lot better on the radio. The phone kind of makes it look white. It's actually a um, colored FFT screen. It looks terrible through the phone. Focus. Yeah. But anyway, huge firmware update for the FTDX 1200. I think you guys would um, would enjoy that. A lot of extra features. A lot. I mean, a ton. But anyway, if you guys have any questions or anything, just post them below, and I'll put links to everything down here so you can go and download the PDF on this if you want to build one like I said the RF engineering ultrasonic detectors are hard to find and when you do find them they're expensive so yeah that's that so I thought what the hell I'm gonna build my own all right guys seven threes and if you have any questions just give me a shout hope to hear you on the radio hopefully we'll hear you on DMR I usually hang on on TAC 310 but I've kind of been all over the place lately <laughs> so seven three skies and um, have a great evening. KG4VDZ.